What is good? We're back. We are going to jump into an updated 2024 Superflex tight end premium with a fresh crack. Rookie mock. <laughs> uh, 1.5 on the premium as per usual. Uh, the draft is weeks away, so we're going to get one more big piece of the puzzle answered very soon, but we are still in the lab plugging away. But today we're going to cover this thing a little different. We have a mock that we did with some of the homies, the pleasure chesters, uh, and we're going to compare that to our ADP and our rankings and talk about some landing spots. Oh my God, the Holy Trinity. 316, it's the rattlesnake. Oh. It feels so good when he jokes. <laughs> so uh, th this is, like I said, already done. There's no mystery to what we're, what we're going to do, but we're going to review it and compare it to where our ADP is of a bunch of drafts that we've done with the public and the homie, the, the pleasure chesters and some other discords that I've been in. Uh, so we're going to throw, we got all that information put together. I got my, my own rankings here, and then we're going to talk about some of the landing spots that go along with everybody. So right off the rip we got caleb williams going one one uh we got marvin harrison going one two we have drake may going one three neighbors one four Jaden daniels one five brock bowers one six roma dunze one seven so i mean the top seven are kind of mix and mashed in, in any which order that that you kind of want to go in it but this is basically the seven that you see in super flex tight end premium uh time and time again right uh, the way I see it, I see Caleb, Marvin Harrison. Then I'm taking the two quarterbacks, which I can I can come around to the fact of saying, hey, if you want to take Malik Neighbors there and, and instead of the two quarterbacks, because maybe a little less of a of a sure thing with the quarterbacks, maybe a lighter percentage of hit rate on the first round quarterbacks. But in Superflex, man, we're always pining for half the league needs a damn second quarterback, you know. Uh, you think you think you have that problem solved and then all of a sudden it, it is not solved. So I and I like Drake May and, and Jaden Daniels a good bit. So I'm sticking with those guys um, sort of as as your next two guys. And then Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze are in the same category. And then Brock Bowers uh, kind of runs that out for how my rankings go. Now, the ADP side of this says Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison, Drake May, Neighbors, Jaden Daniels, Brock Bowers and Roma Dunze. So a little different from kind of how I'm viewing it and a little bit different uh, than how this draft uh, particularly went there. So, I, you know, like I said, I don't really have a, a huge problem with any way you want to do it. If, if you love Brock Bowers and you wanted to say Brock Bowers is is over over a Dunze, that, that's fine. But I'm, I'm going to take Roma Dunze. I think he's much closer to Harrison and Neighbors than I think some people. And now all of a sudden the reception perception's out. So people are starting, <laughs> to, starting to come around <laughs> like, oh, I'm liking Neighbors now because... It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you mean Odunze? Or yeah, I'm like an Odunze now. All green. Uh, right. Oh yeah, because that reception perception it's nails like, it every time. Yeah. I don't know why uh, anybody needs to do any other research. That's it. No uh, deal. All, all kidding. It's that he does. It's it's a fantastic resource that he has. Well, available he has that resource right. available to him. Why he's the one that has it? He, I don't he know. He puts but. in the work and 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 created a great thing. So it is a very good subscription. Um, I, I advise anybody who is is interested in this game to. Go collect the all of the information you can, and he he's got a nice piece of the puzzle, Matt Harmon. That is at reception perception, uh, but Adunze getting a little love. Daniel Jeremiah has been kind of high on him, but it wasn't you know now now we're starting to to drift up a little bit here. So the big seven is is kind of where we're at here. Caleb Williams as for landing spots, we know that Caleb Williams is pretty much going to the Bears at this point, right? Trading yeah. away Fields, there's really not much to talk about. Marvin Harrison um, seems like. It could be the cards, right? Should be the cards at 104, right? Um, but now we're starting to get a little bit of uh, fodder of, and, you know, it could just be fatigue, and we've been here for a while. But there's also a lot of teams kind of in here. You have the cards. You have the Bolts, uh, L.A. Chargers. Um, hell, you even have New England here who have the third pick overall. That You have teams with 
mostly with new GMs, the, mostly with new head coaches, uh, whether it's a year or, or uh, brand new, that, that kind of want to get their fingerprints all over these squads, right? And this this little bit of a move back here for these people who, just like in Superflex, why I'm taking these quarterbacks, the league wants to take these quarterbacks because they, they need the answer. They, they, they're they trying to not get fired. These guys have a little carte blanche. They might be able to move back and, and collect some more assets, uh, you know, just, just like your super flex draft when, when it's, you know, when you're hurting and you need to rebuild, sometimes it's all right to, to, to maybe move back one or two spots and collect some more assets. And I could see Harbaugh doing that. Um, I could see the Cardinals doing that. And, and what would be new, more new England when I know this is a new guard than saying, Hey, fuck it. We'll take, we'll take, you know, something awesome from Minnesota to come up here and get their guy. We'll move back to. 11 or whatever it is so which is where they usually are picking they're never picking this high right? uh, i mean not not normal billy b never um, had a pick this high um they were up pretty high it's been a minute um but you know so i think some of these landing spots could get jostled around it seems like marvin harrison to the cardinals is is locked in there the 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 chargers at five there that could be anywhere from neighbors to a dunze to joe alt to brock bowers but if they move back you know, you have a whole nother list of teams like the Giants um, and, tip, you know, particularly Arizona could could maybe trade back a few spots and, and grab neighbors. So I think if we just keep it like it is, you see probably neighbors go to the Giants, maybe the Cardinals or maybe the Chargers trade back. Cardinals hopefully stick with Marvin Harrison, but there's receiver rich draft. You can move back. So Marvin Harrison to the Cardinals. We're going to go neighbors uh, to the G-men. I think the G-men, you know. Are you upset about that? No, I don't think so. I mean, they 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 need. Obviously, if he goes to the Chargers, it's it's a much better situation. But it feels like if any of these teams for me were were wanting to move back, it would be sort of like the the Chargers have the best uh, the blueprint of kind of what they're laying out right now. Says, hey, we we could move back a little bit or take an offensive lineman right here at five. Um, and not take the neighbors, let let uh, the G-men take neighbors, and then Roma Dunze could fall back to wherever um, L.A. Wherever he traded, came from. Where, wherever, the, wherever he traded back to, um, or, you know, could just land going Chicago kind of in that nine spot with their second pick. Uh, so lots of fun here all of a sudden popping up with this top seven of where they could go brock bowers see i think he's going to land in indy which i think would be great but some talk about the jets uh possibly grabbing him at, at that spot because they need a few more playmakers i would i'd I'd draft another offensive lineman there that for me a lot of these answers if i'm unsure with anything that's going on take another offensive lineman and, and try to keep your quarterback and give him the best chance to survive which is never a sexy um option but i mean just look at look at what a team like detroit has done in that scenario built up an off awesome offensive line and that's kind of where it starts you know the, the trenches are, are kind of where things are one loss it's never fun it's never sexy on draft day uh, but as far as the actual nfl goes i'm never going to be that upset uh when that happens so this while the seven is set in stone sort of in, in in your super flex leagues it seems to be getting chopped up a little bit in in the actual nfl draft where these guys uh could be landing so a lot of, lot of fun there in that top seven, any which way you want to go, and a lot of really, really good players. Like I, don't, I'm, like I said, to start it off with, I, I'm not upset about really getting any of them. Yeah, I mean, how could you be? And then if McCarthy works his way up into right. the early round, early first round, then your 1-8 just got a ton more valuable. And, you know, well, all I've been doing is telling people in the comment section, hold them picks, Bubba. Hold them. Just hold those picks. Right. And don't have your rookie draft before the NFL draft. Like, what are y'all boys doing? Settle down. It's real dumb. So dumb. I'm, I'm a proponent of I want to I look, I, I have fun. We can space it all around, whatever. Before the NFL draft is ludicrous. Outrageous. Right after whatever. I'm, I'm a guy who likes it in August because I like to get all the information I can uh, in there. But um you know whatever i mean it's fun to have a few early and a few late space it out a little bit but uh back to the mock that we had going on here uh mccarthy goes one eight i think at this point everybody knows mccarthy is going in the first round whether or not that is uh one six to the giants or somebody trades up and and you know that's what arizona does and they move back uh and, and Somebody takes JJ, whether that's the Vikings, because they, they've added some ammunition to, to possibly be able to do that. What's TB, your favorite landing spot for JJ McCarthy? TBD, 
but I think he, I don't think he's making it out of the top 15. So, I mean, at this point, I think at one eight, I'm, I'm not upset about it at all. Uh, Brian Thomas goes one nine. Troy Franklin goes one ten. Xavier Worthy one eleven, and then Keon Coleman one twelve. So that's oh, people are going to be upset about that. Yeah, let me get in the strut though. I need to let play with these the guys. Let me get oh. in the strut. Oh baby. <laughs> um, they won't even make it this far in the video. They just went down in the comment section and lit it up. Yeah. Shout out to you. Hey, it helps the algo. Appreciate you. Yeah. So Keon Coleman in our ADP right now, Superflex tight end premium is nineteenth overall, um, or eighteenth uh, overall rather. Because the numbers are one off. This I is the startup ADP. Let me pull up that rookie ADP. So you know, not not you know, that's that's typical. That is where I can right. palate, that's pal- palatable. That, that, that's where I'm down Palpable. to take Keon Coleman. That's where the the red flags get pushed aside, and I say, hey, let's take this guy because I think the draft capital is still going to be good. Uh, still going to be. I don't know. Let's look at round. these red flags. Uh, I've been flashing stuff up on the screen this whole time, but uh, let's. Let's see what Keon Coleman has going on. Uh, breakout age, not the worst. Dominator, pretty good. But a lot of bad metrics here. Uh, you know, the the worst one being down here at the bottom, we got analytics for your pleasure. And it's the uh, it's the stat. Uh, who's our guy from Nikhil Arizona Harry. State? Nikhil Harry. If you have a contested catch, a contested target rate, so if a certain if twenty seven ish is the threshold twenty seven percent or maybe it's twenty six percent of your targets are contested in your final season, then you might be Nikhil Harry. Right, <laughs> Harry, <laughs> your hands are freezing. Can't separate. Right, that's the beef. Yeah, can't that, separate. That's, that's some of the. Uh, but yes. he looked like he was fluid. Looked pretty good in the combine drills and stuff. Looked. Yeah, and when you watch the tape, there there's some good and there's some bad. And the four six one forty up here, did, you know, had some high MPHs on right. on record as well. So, are you fast in in your shorts? Are you fast in your pads and your helmet? Right, and I, I think he's I think he's game speed fast. Uh, I think I think he, you know, the red flags are 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 noted and they're there. And like I said, I I wouldn't take him at that one twelve spot that. Hasselhoff took him there. Um, <laughs> Mud Dog, rather. Sorry, I thought that was David Hasselhoff, but it's it's Bobby Boucher. Yeah. Um, but at, at one at, at eighteen, sure, take the shot. Yeah. I mean, there's there's enough fun upside with right. Keon Coleman at that point. Then, and, then sure, and let the draft capital. Right. That's up there, right? We got and the draft capital. Oh, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll certainly you sort some of that out. I have Keon Coleman ranked uh, at about twenty two, um, so kind of. A little, a little further down, but I'm fine with you know anywhere in that in that 18 to 22 range, um, down down with the with the Keon Coleman. Uh, back to the front half of this, like you said, JJ McCarthy. The longer you hold on to these picks, the better it's going to get for you. The more value you're going to get. I'm not a huge JJ McCarthy guy. It's not because I don't like JJ McCarthy. I just think that it's it's gone. It, he's caught the smoke and it's gone too far. And it's really, I, I don't think he's a bad player. I just think it's it's a little aggressive right now for me uh, where, where JJ's going. But that's going to help you out in fantasy drafts here because the 1-8 is going to get certainly more coveted. And I think, I think we can stop talking about it as it's going to is that or it, is. it is, right? Um, well, unless unless McCarthy doesn't go in the first round and all this right, is a which bunch of... I can't imagine that we're this deep in it and it's, it's this, you know... We've never gotten this crazy with it where it's like, you know, when we had Levis last year, like it was like, yeah, yeah, there was some talk of it. But this is like this is pretty aggressive that 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 I feel is. like everything is really aggressive right now. Everything is so much sooner. Like the, the the rookie mocks, you know, every year we get earlier and earlier and earlier with all this stuff. And this year it just seemed like the NFL caught on too, and everything's just early, early, early. Right. And. If there's already smoke, you might as well, you know, if every, right. if nobody wants him, you might as well throw some information out there that you do want him. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I can't imagine he's escaping the top 15. I think I think you're going to get all you're going to get five uh, quarterbacks, if not all six in the first round, like I've been saying. Uh, and, and worst case scenario, you're going to get Will Levis on day two where it's super early second round. Now, you know, I've said this every time we've done this. I like Penix more than McCarthy. I would I rank Penix and McCarthy kind of similarly. McCarthy is seemingly surely going to get the draft capital. If Penix gets a first round draft capital, I will like Penix 
still over J.J. McCarthy. You don't have to. Um, but that's Let them know in the comments. Go that's, down there and get it in. Oh, oh, but, I can't that do that. Pressure to sack number is elite from Penix, and that's the new that's the, the new god stat. So. I haven't gotten the um, quarterback player pages made yet, but I'm working my way through running backs and quarterback or wide receivers. You know, just just because I have him ranked up that high doesn't mean that I'm going to take him that high. Doesn't mean that I need to take him that high. I'm going to kind of figure out where the public is, adjust to that, and make try to stay in front of it a little bit. JJ McCarthy. You know, I, I I'm not opposed to taking him at one eight because I know other people will want him at one eight, right? That's what mm-hmm. we're that's what we're doing. I'm trying to get get things that other people want, uh, and then they'll place the value on it, and I can do something up with it. Or if I'm lucky enough to be able to trade out of that spot, you know, down to one eleven, um, because somebody really wants JJ McCarthy, I'll gladly take Xavier Worthy, Lad McConkey, uh, or you know, Michael Penix if he gets the first round draft cap because I, I still don't know how much people are going to even like. Michael Penix, even if he does get the first round draft capital to say, you know, if, if you're <laughs> if you're already a hater, it's probably not going to change your mind all that much. Uh, so we got a board full of words, trigger words. If you say it, then you got to drink. High point was like the first one ever. I was me like eight years ago. I was like, he high points the ball. Well, he, everybody high points the ball yeah. real well. Draft cap. That, well, maybe not draft cap. That's even more annoying. Yeah. <laughs> draft capital. Oh, goodness gracious. But we, we know the draft capital is coming with McCarthy. So your 1 8 is more valuable. 1 9, Brian Thomas, fine with that. Uh, 1 10, Franklin. Now, with Franklin, I sort of have Franklin kind of push down the board a little bit. Not, not a crazy amount, but just probably right outside the first round because uh, I'm going to put JJ and Michael Penix here in the first round. Uh, and then I'm going to have Xavier Worthy, Brian Thomas, and I'm going to have Lad McConkey uh, in the first round. Now, in this particular one, uh, Xavier Worthy was my pick at 111. Um, I wasn't able to take Ladd McConkey because I don't have another pick. I have Xavier Worthy kind of at the top of that tier, so I took Xavier. Um, I know for sure that, well, I don't know for sure, but I think he's going to get the first-round draft capital. I, I think Ladd is potentially going to get that first-round draft capital as well right at the end, going to a really good team. Um, but seems like Xavier Worthy will get that draft capital, uh, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and grab him. At the end of that first round, I'm going to knock Troy Franklin probably back to that 2-1 to 2-2 range. Um, and I would move uh, Penix up into this first round. Once again, I know that right now I don't have to take Penix in that range. So I am not taking Penix in that range. I know I can get Penix in the middle of the second round almost every single time uh, that we do this. Because when we look at the ADP uh, for Michael Penix in these drafts, it's 22. Uh, so... You know, he's he's back into the uh, first round there. So McCarthy seems like if everything kind of stays where it is, Minnesota would be uh, the the landing spot that I would like for J.J. McCarthy. I think any of these quarterbacks get that landing spot. You're going to be I'm going to be excited about it. I like that landing spot a lot. Um, And and the G-men would be uh, would be all right too. Uh, maybe sit for a year behind Daniel Jones and hang out. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. Landing spot wise. uh Obviously, I think Buffalo would be a really, really exciting spot for him. I don't know if he'll last that long in the draft. There's a lot of rumors that that you know he might be going a little higher than that, but that would be the landing spot that I would want to see. I don't think he should go as high as some people are saying. That seems a little crazy to me. Uh, so I, I, w- I would say Buffalo um, for for Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, Troy Franklin, like I said, I, I have him back a little bit in my rankings, 2-1, 2-2. Uh, that would be for me like top of the second round if Carolina grabbed him. As now you get a field stretcher in there to go along with Deontay Johnson. I would I would like that. I think Carolina leads off the second round with their picks. Uh, with 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 the first pick of the second round, like to see that go down. So Carolina maybe uh, for Troy Franklin, Xavier Worthy. I think Dallas is a nice fit staying that right there in Texas. They need to add another playmaker. They're they're kind of cap strapped and and they need to add through the draft. You heard. Uh, McCarthy kind of talking about that like why haven't they done anything well when you have good players you have to develop all the other players around them because you're you're playing you're paying all of your good players so you get a little strapped here and there Um, so I think Xavier Worthy uh, to Dallas makes a whole lot of sense Keon Coleman don't really have a landing spot necessarily for him he's a little further down I'm not exactly sure where he's gonna go but like a like a baltimore seems like a Ugh. like a keon coleman type landing yeah, spot just, just a nitty gritty dirty 
just no fantasy value at all. Which people <laughs> no. already people already hate him. So no, be no, perfect. there's some fantasy value there. Give we a got third the, round pick. We got the draft if he goes to Baltimore. Fucking working out there. They need another wide receiver. He fits perfect. They just got Henry. They're not gonna throw doing. it to oh, fucking Keon Coleman. Why not? So that's I, I, I he he seems like a like that that kind of a a fit to me uh, in there in their system of kind of what they would want to do. Give him a completely different type of receiver than they have. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with the first round. Uh, any anything else you got in this first round that you that you want to go over? Nah, just like I just, said, uh, hit us in the comments about Keon Coleman in one twelve. You know, <laughs> where do you think Get Keon it Coleman out. should go? I yeah, think, I think yeah, exactly. At starting off the next round, we got Ad Mitchell at the two one. We got Benson at the two two. We got McConkey at the two three. We got Brooks at the two four. Corum at the two five. Xavier Leggett at the two six. So, uh, Leggett maybe a little early there. Uh, I, I probably have him ranked kind of where I have Keon at the back half of this uh, second round. Currently, I have him right after Keon Coleman, uh, right at twenty three there. So, just hanging on. But I but I like him a lot. I just you know like say, just like Keon Coleman with Xavier Leggett. It's hey, there's some red flags there, but there is context to the red flags uh, of kind of the reasons why he didn't play and, and, and all that jazz. Coleman or Leggett? What did um, you say? Mm, I think I'd have to go Leggett. Same tier for me. So Yeah. And back, that's why I got them pushed together in the yeah. back there. Um, but I like both of them, and it seems like they're both, uh, at least Leggett seems to be trending a little bit in the positive direction. Keon may be going down, but that might be a little bit more on the fantasy sphere. I think real NFL guys have had you know, Keon in the first round a lot. He might slip into the second, but still probably going to get pretty good draft capital. Well, look at that Raz score for Leggett. I mean, he just lit up the combine. Yeah, tiny I mean, hands, he, though. He looked, uh, <laughs> he looked fantastic. Is there a hand score on that? I don't have a hand score. Blade breakout age and uh, bad first downs per route run rate. Yeah. That's a hot stat. Kids like these. Oh, days. love it. Love it. That's, then, that's the stat. Real quick for your pleasure. The uh, under the usage here, the first downs per route run versus zone, particularly. That's the new. That's the Puka stat. That's how they that's how they found mm. out that Puka was good. Yeah. Versus the zone coverage. You got to be right. good versus zone, which I think I don't know. Point one, one, two. I don't have all the thresholds. I've been working on getting like what's the minimum maximum threshold right like breakout age 19 and below is good 20s not 20s like yellow 21 and older not good right um been working on the thresholds i can't remember exactly what this threshold is i believe that's a little bit under the threshold but i mean can you really point to one stat you know come on guys right anyway <laughs> uh so kicking this the top of this uh second round off can he play Right. I would have Troy Franklin here at, at this spot here. And then I would take also have the two running backs. I'd have Brooks um, and Benson. And like I said, I would have Lab McConkey up in the first round there. I think he's an absolute beast. Um, so A.D. Mitchell, you'd still have in the AD, second? A.D. Mitchell, yeah. I'd be A.D. Mitchell I have after Worthy. Troy Franklin, Franklin, Brooks, and Benson. Then I have Mitchell and Bo Nix uh, kind of coming in there as the next couple of guys as far as uh, my rankings. So... You know, we're not terribly far off. Once again, we're jumbled up. Those are my rankings. They're not your rankings, but we're, we're pretty close to what that's kind of saying. Uh, and then ADP wise, uh, where we're at here, Troy Franklin's 12, Vlad McConkey's 13, AD Mitchell 14, then the two running backs, Brooks and, and Benson uh, 15, 16, and then Bo Nix at 17. So we're right. kind of. So real quick, uh, just for the ADP, right? We've got Superflex startup ADP. We've got rookie Superflex ADP. This is uh, a conglomerate of mocks we've done. With the patrons uh, over on the pleasure chest, uh, they have access to this ADP. Uh, this is all post combine ADP, I believe, and we've been doing all these mocks all off season long. So if you want to come get in these mocks, come mock it up, get access to this ADP. I haven't released these player pages to the patrons yet, but I'm I was making them tonight. I made a template. I just put the name in, and it pops out pages. So I'm starting to create these. They'll be released uh, soon to the patrons. Um, and then, you know, I don't know if we'll release Casey's rankings or not here. At some point we will. But Well, we can um, throw them up on the screen if you need them when, if, you're, if you're editing and whatnot. Yeah, I probably will leave them off of this. But just wanted to show you guys, you know, get, come get in these mocks. Come get this ADP. Come, come join the fun. Uh, lots of stuff going over on Patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Yeah, and as for landing spots in the second round here, um, AD Mitchell, uh, lots of talk for him for Buffalo for that, for that, 
uh, Brian Thomas selection I had earlier and maybe Brian Thomas going a little earlier, maybe to somewhere like Jacksonville. Um, but for me, A.D. Mitchell would be kind of that second round Steelers, Cincy maybe with T. Higgins maybe not sticking around. New Orleans needs another guy. The Colts could use another one. New England still going to need some pass catchers in there. So I think all of those kind of options would be that those are your second round kind of options for receivers. Carolina could hit him at the top of the second round. Like I said, Troy Franklin, uh, that would be kind of where I would want to see him go. Uh, but A.D. Mitchell may be a, a, a T. Higgins replacement over there in in Cincy, Cincy potentially, if if they don't get a long-term deal done. But like I said, New Orleans would also, and New England Steelers all kind of need other options over there. I don't love him for the Steelers. I think he's too much like George Pickens, but um, I would love to see like a, a... Like between the helmet or just a game style? Um kind of just the way they operate like both kind of have like i think unlimited potential but kind of take plays off and kind of don't maybe don't maximize their full potential on every single play and and kind of kind of shit like that they, i don't you know a lot to like about ad mitchell but i haven't pushed back for a lot to for dislike a, some red on that couple of uh for a couple of those reasons there so trey benson uh the running backs it's probably going to be benson and brooks getting the second round draft capital uh, i think either one of those guys going to dallas makes a whole lot of sense uh, like I said, I have them ranked back to back. The ADPs back to back, right here. They have a spot in between them, them and and Lad. Um, but we could just say Trey Benson to Dallas. Uh, we'll we'll throw him there because I think one of those Dallas is in desperate need of uh, another running back to go with Rico Dowdle. So um, if he goes to Dallas, how far up the rankings would you put? Him? I, right, right where I have him because I have, for for my rankings personally, I ha like I said, I have him. You know, I got those guys right at the end of the first round, top of the second round. So I think I don't think they can move a whole lot more for me, uh, per se. So end of the first, early second, they're kind of tiered up in that area for me uh, because I kind of have all that baked in. They're going to go to a higher draft capital kind of going into uh, a good landing spot. So there's some running back needs here. I know that the free agency, you know, kind of told you a little bit like saying, hey, this class, we don't. We're gonna we're gonna get some of these guys that we didn't pay last year. We're gonna pay them a little bit and sign them to a couple of year contracts. But Dallas needs a running back. Uh, the Chargers need a running back. Cleveland could potentially be in the running back market with Chubb being injured now. Arizona's got James Conner and then you know a, a bunch of other guys. Vegas lost uh, Josh Jacobs. They have Zamir White. They're picking at forty four, so that could be a Jonathan Brooks. Hey, let's get Zamir White in here for a little bit. We'll get Brooks back to healthy. Uh, Vegas picking at 44 would be interesting. Uh, Pittsburgh, you know, last year of Najee Harris, if you don't want to give him the fifth-year extension, you know, one of these bell cow guys maybe going a little late to Pittsburgh. You know, I don't, probably not there, but maybe in the third round could be a, a Marshawn Lloyd or a, or a Wright or, or maybe even a Quorum or something. But uh, the G-Men at 47 is also an interesting landing spot for another running back. They brought in Singletary. So they could use another guy. So I'll I'll put uh, I'll put Brooks on the Raiders and I'll put Benson uh, on Dallas there. And then we got Lad McConkey coming in here at two three. Love to see him go to the Chiefs. That's where I'm begging, begging, please, 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 either go to the Chiefs or Buffalo. Uh, and and I would be super stoked about that. Blake Corum uh, then coming in here at two five. Uh, and he that's that's about you know kind of right right where I have him in the rankings. He comes in after Bo Nix and Ad Mitchell. Uh, he's kind of in the group, the next tier with Jalen Wright, Marshawn Lloyd, and, and Corum. If Corum was uh, two years younger, RB one probably. You know, he's he, he's got everything you want except for maybe the long speed. The quickness is elite. Uh, he's great vision. He's everything you want from a running back. He caught some decent passes his freshman year. I think it was his freshman year. I don't think he's incapable of casting passes. Uh, could definitely see Corum at at the Chargers there. That's where everybody's kind of. Uh, you know, easy, is old. easy, easy play there uh, for, for Blake Corum to the Chargers. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. Yeah, they're called doctors. All right, let's keep it rolling here. We got um, Michael Penix kick, bringing it out at, at 2-7. Oh, uh, Xavier Leggett, we didn't hit a landing spot for him. Um, you know, somewhere like San Fran late in the game there, mm. you know, you know, a little later, third round or so. Mm -hmm. um, but or, you know, Lad, maybe end of the first for the Niners. Maybe let Ayuk walk or trade him. Praise him with Lad. That could be sexy. 
Could be sexy. All right, Penix at 2-7. We got Wright at 2-8. Jalen Wright, that is another running back. We got Bo Nix at 2-9. Ricky Pearsall at 2-10. That's, that's some hot fire, uh, but I like it. Uh, JT Sanders at Jatavion at 2-11. And we got Malachi Corley coming in at, at 2-12. So um, that's, you know, rounding out the, that second round there. Like I said, I have uh Bo Nix Jalen Wright Marshawn Lloyd Blake Corum kind of all in that next tier then I have Jatavion Sanders there's so there's a there's maybe some spots where Jatavion lands that I might bump him up um ahead of those running backs and Bo Nix goes in the first round and I think you're gonna get a little bit of Will Levis or even top of the second round top you know two one two six um I think they'll be you know just like JJ McCarthy is going to push ADP down from that one eight, like we've been seeing all year, all off season here. And when he, he's going to go there and, and, and give you some good value. I think Bo Nix and Michael Penix are also going to probably get pushed up to the top of that second round, give you some really good value on the back half of this second round in your uh, fantasy drafts in, in super flex. So uh, let's get, let's see where the ADP has, has the next guys kind of rounding out. So at 16, Trey Benson at 17, or uh, let's see here, where are we at? That's right. 15 is Trey Benson. 15 is Trey Benson. Uh, 16 is Bo Nix. 17 is Blake Corum. Keon Coleman, like we said earlier, 18. Uh, Jalen Wright, 19. Uh, Roman Wilson up there high in the ADP. Maybe a little, that's, that's probably a little rich for my blood. Uh, 21, Jatavion Sanders. Although Roman looking like he's going to get good draft capital. So I need to get in drafts with these guys. Maybe <sighs> E me on that one. Uh, Michael Penix, 22. Braylon Allen, uh, 23 and rounding out the f uh, second round we got Marshawn Lloyd and then Leggett right there or Leggett uh, at 25 Leger. is 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 right there uh, in the mix uh, so you know I don't think anything's terribly far off base here you get in these drafts takes one guy to to, to pick a guy that that you don't think to, takes one guy to pick Keon Coleman at 112 you know that's really how this goes takes one guy to take uh, Leggett at Two six, and then you know, hey, usually they go back here, and eight out of ten they're back here. But on these two, they weren't. Uh, so you know, got to get in the draft with those kind of guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Michael Penix landing spots. Like I said, I love him. Um, pressure to sack, Ooh, <laughs> elite. Because <laughs> you know we need we need to have numbers that correlate to eliteness. We can't just watch him play and go a lot of casuals watching him. That you know. I think is have a lot of silly reasons to not have him up higher. I think he's the best fucking thrower of the football and maybe this entire class outside of Caleb Williams. Uh, listen, but, listen. Hey, he's Don't got, let the liberal yeah. media tell you how to think and feel. Right. He's got some knee injuries, but the medicals came back really good. I, I like I like Penix to the Raiders in the first round. Um, Seattle in the first round. Mm. Or Minnesota. Minnesota. Um, if if anybody miss misses there, I feel like maybe Nick's is a better fit for Denver and what Denver would kind of want to do. Bad quarterbacks, bye. <laughs> <laughs> just a just a. Just, what was the last good one, John Elway? I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ! I guess Peyton, but even him, he wasn't that Tebow. good. Uh, so Michael Penix, I, those would be kind of my selections in the first round and then early second rounds. I could see any of those teams again then if they didn't go that route, trading up uh, into the second round and grabbing uh, Knicks and or Penix. I don't think either of those guys are going to last too long. So right then at 2-8, like I said, some there's some running back needy teams that, that I've, I've been kind of keeping an eye on, um, like Carolina, Tampa Bay. I know that Tampa Bay has uh, Rashad White, but they need another guy in there, I believe. They said they want to um, get another guy in there. Uh, Arizona, Cleveland. So a lot, lot of options for, for right there to go late second, early third. Pearsall, don't have a landing spot for him per se because I'm not really sure where he's going to go. Jatavion Sanders, like if, some, if, 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 if somewhere awesome like the Chargers or, um, you know, I, I would say Cincinnati, but they, they haven't been – uh, great with the tight end situation. Maybe maybe Bowers doesn't make it to the Colts. Maybe the Colts grab somebody like Jatavion Sanders. I think there's some some really intriguing spots that could be really, really fun uh, for Jatavion Sanders. Really good pass catcher here. And then Malachi Corley, I think the favorite landing spot for him for a lot of people is is in one way, shape, or form going to Pittsburgh um, and kind of give him that, that nasty kind of attitude, much like I said, uh, 
Keon Coleman style kind of fit in Malachi Corley seems like he would fit in Pittsburgh also would would really fit as a uh, potential I'm not saying he's Debo but could be a potential Debo replacement in in uh, in Sam Fran if, if they wanted to get out from that contract in a year or so uh, would, would be interesting a little later if they could get their hands on him because he can do kind of similar things uh, and the right person getting a hold of Corley I think is very important for uh, his his draft uh, status there so uh, that's going to wrap up the second round, and I, I got the top 24 ranked. I'm not going to talk about any more of my rankings here. We're just going to rattle off the rest of these guys. We've got Marshawn Lloyd, 3-1. I think that's really good value there. Bra- uh, Braylon Allen at 3-2, solid. Roman Wilson, solid. Javon Baker, solid at 3-4, like all those. Uh, Sinat, Sinnott at 3-5. Uh, he, he's on the list for f- my favorite shots to take, especially tight end premium. Uh, love, love, love him in the third round. Uh, so my, my must kind of takes... Uh, here of guys that I'm always looking at Baker's one of them and he got taken uh, Roman Wilson if he's around sure uh, but Malik Washington one of my favorites Jalen McMillan one of my favorites Shipley for the running backs in that third round go Tigers Rattler um, for yeah. quarterbacks in the third round he's going to get good draft capital I think um, and, smoke. and he's a lot of he's just he was the QB fucking one, man. Like, that's the guy that Caleb replaced. There's some good, good, good stuff on Caleb or uh, on, on Rattler. Just think he was a little immature, had to get his had to get humbled a little bit. And, and from all accounts, it seems like he has. And well, nothing will humble you, humble you like going to Carolina <laughs> and getting beat up there. But, you know, I, I think a good coach got a South hold of Carolina. him. Another good coach got a hold of him in South Carolina. I think they got humbled Who's a little that? bit. Uh, Oh, what's your boy his, Beamer? Uh, yeah, Beamer. Good coach. Yeah, good, real good coach. Uh, great coach, actually. I think in the making there, uh, Carolina's on a, on a path to being to being pretty good. I think. Uh, um, and Rattler um, kind of got there, revived career a little bit. Uh, ha- had some good ups and downs there, and then the Senior Bowl, uh, a lot of good stuff from Rattler. So I think he's going to get you know maybe late second, early third draft capital, and so he's somebody in the third round that you should be eyeballing. Um, you know that will never work out though, right? Like a second, yeah. third round. Oh, that's never worked. Yeah, never. Not gonna um, work out. Thrash is another guy. I got him in the, at four eleven here. Uh, is Marshawn Lloyd too low in this draft for you? Is that why you I, haven't really said something? About I, him I, being? I, said, I said good value there. Three, yeah, at three so, one. So you, I mean, he's not a must draft in the third because you think he's going second. Right. I th- I think he should be. At, like I said, I have him ranked at the back end of this with that in that group with Wright, Corum, and and him him in. You know, probably that two eight to, to two ten spot, and then or or maybe uh, two seven to, to two nine, and then I would take you know Jatavion Sanders somewhere in there, and then Keon and, and Leggett would be the last two for me, uh, kind of in that round. So I think Al- Lloyd is a good value there, and then Braylon Allen is a nice shot in the third third round. I think you know there, there's a lot, lot of lot of fun upside there. Bad target market share for. Uh Right. Marshawn Lloyd. Marshawn Lloyd. I think I like his tape a little better at Carolina from USC, but put down a lot of good stuff at USC. Um, had a good combine. He's fast. I think he can catch it pretty well. He's got the parts and pieces of a three down player. Uh, will he be that? I don't know. Probably not. Uh, but that's I think that's why he's a little further down. But we'll see kind of where he ends up and, and, and where he goes. I, I, I would probably put right. I'd put Corum at the top of that list of those three guys. Just a little older. Um, but I definitely like his skill set the best and doesn't need any pot. He's going to go right into the league and be effective, whereas Wright and Lloyd might have a little bit more of a learning curve, but they're younger so they can afford it. Uh, but their their ceilings are, are there. Um, and then Braylon Allen's ceilings there as well. It's just also a little bit of refinement. If you, you know, we, we did a, I did an episode with Austin talking about Allen. You know, that last year, everybody likes to point it got worse. Well, they changed everything, man. They changed everything on Braylon Allen. They changed. They went from a power system from what you knew at, at Wisconsin forever to being an air raid offense with uh, Fickle and uh, the offensive coordinator right now is I'm drawing a blank on. But that completely changes everything for Allen and the personnel that they had set up. So, you know, that, that could be. But he also caught over 20 balls that in that. So, you know, oh, that's got to be good for his uh, for his uh thresholds of of uh well 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 he must be good at catching the ball then because he caught it that many times one time in in a different offense so uh anyway uh we had Jalen Polk at three six resuming here uh Tez Walker at three seven Shipley at three eight uh Johnny Wilson three nine Malik Washington three ten Jalen McMillan three eleven and Estime at three twelve not out on Estime by any means 
Um, if we're if we're getting in this third round, middle third, late third, and estimates around, I'll take him. Yeah, the forty wasn't great. The pro day forty was much better, apparently. Uh, but the explosion score is off the charts with uh, with Estime. And you know, if you if you like the tape, there's no reason to get that down on Estime. You just got yeah, a deal on him, right? He just yeah, you don't want to take him at two ten anymore because we don't have to. We can take him at three. We'll see where the draft capital ends up, and maybe that's not good. But I'll still take him at the end of the third every single time. Um, so, and then rounding this fourth round out, Ray Davis, Spencer Rattler, great pick there. Uh, Bucky Irving, still, I'll still take him. Coker, Brendan Rice, uh, Garendo, Cowling, Burton, Stover, Schrader, Thrash, and Milton to round it out. Like I said, the guys that I'm taking the shots on in these third. Garendo, right? Yeah. Well, he, he's on my need to finish watching list. Need to finish. I need, got to finish. Watching. Yeah. Need to finish. Watch. I got, I got. Johnny Wilson, Garendo, Burton, and and Schrader are uh, guys that I, I, I need to finish up on. Uh, but the guys that I know for sure that I'm taking these shots on in that in that third round are Washington, McMillan, Shipley, Sinnott, Rattler, Thrash, Cowing. Um, and, and some of those guys are a little later as well, so we'll see how that all kind of... Baker was one of those guys as well. Uh, and then uh, Vidal from Troy is... Awesome. So much fun to watch. He He's the other running back after Shipley, the, the later running back that I want to get all, every time. I want to make sure I'm leaving my draft with with him. We'll see how where his draft capital is. But man, he is he is like a little mighty mouse out there. He's so much fun to watch. Got the speed uh, kind of has all the makings of a potential bell cow back, like got more of the parts and pieces of a bell cow back than some of these guys who are going a little higher. Uh, so I, I like him. You got to make sure you get Vidal from Troy. Uh, later in these drafts, hopefully, I can't imagine he's not getting drafted. Um, might might end up being a fourth or fifth round draft pick, maybe. Um, but you know, interesting. We'll see where that landing spot is. So those are kind of all my spots and and shots that I'm taking uh, later in these drafts. Uh, like I said, I like Will Shipley a good bit. Seems like he's getting kind of thrown down in the mix here, but forgotten, forgotten. Um, but but and you know, good hands. Oh yeah, quick. Quick as a cat, tough. Yeah, real quick. Maybe, maybe not quite son, the long, long speed, hard but, hat. But I he's mean, white. <laughs> he he's great contact balance. He yeah, can break oh, tackles, sure. yeah. shifty. I mean, oh yeah, very reliable in in the pass catching yeah. game. I mean, I big fan of. Also, seems like Tez Will Walker Shipley. is a really really good value um, currently. Like yeah. Fell out of that end of the first. He's kind of all the way in the mid third. Had a pretty good combine too. Didn't Had a he? pretty I mean, good combine. Uh, was ran fast. 30, 30 in the in the ADP right now for him. Uh, all those guys that I that I named off. Corley's twenty seven in in the ADP for us. Rattler's thirty three in the ADP for us. Jalen McMillan thirty in the ADP for us. Will Shipley thirty five. Malik Washington thirty six. Um, Estime forty. Cowing 42, Senate 43. Give my man a break here. That is gold all day long. Um, Thrash 47. Luke McCaffrey not on this list, but just take the bloodline late, bro. <laughs> right. Gore too. I mean, shit. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Vidal's here at 51. So a lot of lot of good lot of good stuff down here late. Um, Dylan Lobb from New Hampshire, great receiving back there. Uh, and Aeneas Smith is somebody who we didn't really get to see at the combine. I'm, I just started kind of watching him. He's kind of interesting. Jaheim Bell, another tight end who's interesting late in drafts. Uh, so that'll about wrap it up for for this edition of uh, of a mock draft for the FFD guys here. But a lot of information there. Just wanted to kind of show you what we were cooking with and, and a lot of different cross-referencing of, of where guys are and, and what to do with those guys and, and where I like them and some landing spots that might be possible. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Hit us with the $5 holler on the Patreons. You can get access to all those great little chat charts that, that Jason was putting up there for you. Uh, you get access to all the drafts that we're doing. We throw those out in the uh, Discord first thing. And then sometimes we'll throw them out a little earlier to the public to just get more public in there. Um, but then you get access to all this ADP. You'll have access to my rookie rankings as well. Um, and I'm, I'm working through the regular old rankings right now. So a lot of stuff coming, a lot of updates coming. We get three extra episodes, by the way. Uh, and, and we're doing, you know, roster reviews over there too. 
Three um, extra episodes you know, on the Patreon. On the Patreon, yep. And we're doing roster reviews over there. We got more roster reviews coming uh, as, for, for the public as well. So, all and if you're not ready to stuff. throw us the five dollar holler, go over to Patreon. There's a free membership you can sign up for. You can get a free Discord. Part of the Discord is free. So I don't, I, I don't know if you said that. Or I not, did not. I need to start saying that more. Um, and we didn't politic enough for the for the voting. I think the voting's passed yeah, now we've for passed the voting. Right? Best of Charleston. I don't really uh, care that much. Yeah. <laughs> We should have farmed that out to India or something. Should have just made a bot. That just yeah, yeah. Votes. <laughs> um, which I'm sure somebody did. Next year. Next year. Well, you really just have to pay them. They yeah. want you to pay them advertising money, and right. then you can win. Right. I think it's I think, pretty yeah, much how it goes. It's pretty much the email that came with the, right. hey, you've been selected. And if you want to win, <laughs> my one throw is like, ah, at least three hundo. Yeah. So, appreciate you guys. Uh, this was this was fun. I enjoyed the exercise. Sorry if there was a few times where we got a little all over the place, but it's a lot of information. Um, sorry I'm not sorry. Yeah. So, you know, maybe maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Maybe go fuck yourself. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> On that note, appreciate you guys. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Peace.